Today we're going to talk about limited domain and range. It relates well to what we talked about in our last lesson, talking about uh, domain and range. And so we have a few blanks to fill out first uh, before we do some examples. So we go, what if you have a specific domain? And just bear with me, I still haven't gotten my good stylus yet, but I think you should be able to read. So what if you have a specific domain that you want to graph over? How does this change the way you graph and how you find the range? And so if you remember, domain is the x values and range is the y values. So in this case, you would only graph that portion. You would only graph that portion of the equation, keeping in mind the included and not included n values. So that means you got to keep in mind whether it's a closed point or an open point. And we do that by looking at the graph and looking at our domain, whether it's open or closed. So in essence, it is like graphing a line segment. So it's like graph, graphing a line segment instead of the whole line. Once it is graphed, you find the range. just like any other graph. And we're also going to show how to double check your graphs. So if we look at this first example here, f of x equals 2x plus 1. So we want to graph that. <clears throat> and so I'm going to pick um, a different color. And so if you look, this is like our normal y equals mx plus b. Um, it's our uh, y-intercept is the b value and our slope is the m value. So our y-intercept is at 1, and so I'm going to do my best to draw a line that's with slope of 2 at 1. So it might look a little wavy, but I think you'll get the idea. So this is our line, <coughs> our overall line of the graph y equal, of f of x equals 2x plus 1. And so now, though, we are given the domain. So you can see the domain here is negative 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. So that means we're only wanting to graph the part of this line that is covered by, that is between negative 3 and 2 for your x values. So if you look, negative 3 is right here, and positive 2 is right here on the x-axis. So then we need to line it up. Well, negative 3 looks like it hits right here, and we're going to leave that as an open circle because, as you can see, it's just less than. And then at 2, we're going to have a closed circle because it's less than or equal to. And now we want to connect those two points and that's the graph we want, the red line. So you can either uh, draw in two different colors, or you can also erase if you need to. So if I'm going to erase this yellow part, you can see I'm left with just my red line, and there's my little yellow dot left over from where we started. The way to double check. So maybe you're, you don't feel very confident with your graphing skills. So you're not sure. It looks like you think the range is from this lowest point to this highest point. So that looks like about negative 5 less than y less than or equal to positive 5. And so the way to check is to plug in the numbers at the ends of your domain. So we're going to try f of negative 3, and we'll plug that into our equation. So we have 2 times negative 3, so it takes the place of the x, plus 1, and that equals negative 6 plus 1, or negative 5. So that one checks out. And let's try 
f of 2. So this is our second x value. And we're going to plug that in. So it's 2 times 2 plus 1. What does that equal? 4 plus 1 gives us positive 5. And that checks out as well. So that is our first example. So give me a second. I'm going to go to our second example and third examples on the back of the page. So let's look here. So we have a new graph. And unfortunately, I don't know why, but this graph, it, it just didn't quite come out how I wanted to when I printed it out. So I'm going to draw in the x-axis, which is right here at this x. I'm just going to draw it in. Let's try that again. I'm getting worse, aren't I? So the x-axis is right where that x is, and I'm just going to draw it in. And so <clears throat> we can see the x-axis right there. So once again, we're going to go yellow for our graph. We have our graph is f of x is negative 3x minus 5, and we're wanting to find the range by graphing. So first of all I look at the negative 5 that is my y-intercept so I'm going to put my little dot there and then I look at my um, slope which is the negative 3. So my slope is the negative 3 so that means I'm going down 3 and to the right 1. So I'm going down like that and that means to the left, I'm going up 3 and over 1, up 3 and over 1, up 3. And so the graph is going to look something like that, or close to it. So it should be a downhill graph because it's a negative slope. Now, we're going to look at our domain. We have negative 5 to negative 1, and you can see they're both closed because they're in brackets. So negative 5 would be way out here, and negative 1 for x is right there. So it looks like I'm going to be here, up at the top, with a solid circle, and right there. Well, somewhere right there. So then I'm going to connect them. And so if I look and see, I would say... My range is, my range looks like it's between negative 1, closed, and 10. But like I said, I want to check because I may have graphed it incorrectly. I'm using a bad pen, so it might not have drawn the lines that I needed to draw. So let's check. So we're going to do f of negative 5. Let's see what it gives us. So we have negative 3 times negative 5 minus 5. And that's going to be 15 minus 5 or 10. So that one checks out. Good. 10 matches up right here. And now let's see if negative 1 works. So we're going to plug in F of negative 1. So that's going to give us negative 3 times negative 1 minus 5. So that becomes positive 3 minus 5 or negative 2. So you can see that doesn't match up. So that means we messed up our graph. And so the real range because I trust my math skills more than my drawing skills for the graphing. The real range would be closed at negative 2 to 10 closed. So that is why we always check whether or not we have the right points of the graph. Because, uh, because I drew this one poorly, I missed the point that it was going to match up with. And now we have one more, one more 
um, example. So we have f of x is 1 half x minus 2. And like I said before, this didn't print out very well. We're going to just sketch in the x-axis there. Now we're going to draw our line. So we know it starts at negative 2 and it's a slope of 1 half. So that means up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. I'm going to try to connect my points. And you can see my whole graph there. So I think I did a better job with that one, but we'll still have to double check. So then we're looking between 2 and 6. So 2 is there, and 6 is there. So now if you look and see where they match up, you can see 2 and 6 are both open. So we need to put open circles at x equals 2 and x equals 6. And then we're going to connect them. So this looks like it looks like my range is going to be open and then my lowest point is at negative 1 for y and my highest point is at positive 1 for y. And they're open, so that's why we have parentheses. So now let's double check our answers. So we're going to find f of 2 first, so we're going to use our domain and plug in those values. So we're going to have 1 half times 2 minus 2. So that gives us 1 minus 2, which equals negative 1. So that matches up. That checks out. Good. And then we're going to try f of 6. And so we're going to have 1 half times 6 minus 2. So 1 half times 2 gives me 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So that also checks out. So our graphed range is our correct range. So to go back, we still graph the whole graph. But then I always want to put the smaller graph or the limited domain and range graph in a different color or erase the whole graph down to just the part that encompasses that part of the domain and finally we'll double check our answers in case we mess up on the graphing part. Thank you for listening and I hope this helps you with limited domain and range.